of St. Lucia, bananas are the main cash crop and the bedrock of the agricultural sector. From 2012 to 2014, it has made a total contribution to the economy of St. Lucia of over 60 million EC dollars. The presence of black cigatoka disease was first confirmed to be affecting banana crops in 2010. This was compounded by the devastation of Hurricane Tomas and St. Lucia was not exporting bananas from November 2010 to June 2011. The socio-economic impact of black cigatoka was growing more with each banana harvest. Any response now meant little room for error. To get it right the first time, it had to be nothing short of all hands united against the threat. The disease initially was found in the northern half of the country and it, it was concentrated mainly in the forest there. Um, this is region two and in the Miku area which is region four and uh, after a few weeks it could be found covering nearly the whole island. On this, uh, a situation which I um, termed an emergency situation in the banana industry where a number of farmers were unable to harvest crops for, for export. It was absolutely necessary to bring on board all of the agencies and the stakeholders. We held meetings with Winfresh, with um, the, the, the TQFC. We held meetings with the Fair Trade Organization in St. Lucia, the, the NFTO, but also we, we held meetings with, with, with professionals, experts, people who worked on the, on the Black Cigatoka Management Program. Um, and we, we also met with, with officials of ICA, we met with officials of, of CIRAD um, to ensure that we were all on the same page. And those meetings involved um, meetings with, with farmers and technical meetings with, with those, those agencies and with the scientists um, before we actually went to cabinet with the plan. St. Lucia was now united against Black Sigatoka. All hands were in, farmers, lodge producers, but even so, St. Lucia's Ministry of Agriculture, Food Production, Fisheries, Cooperatives and Rural Development recognized early on that they lack the disease control techniques to fully tackle the problem of Black Sigatoka. In early 2012, when we uh, did our assessments, we recognized that over a three-year period, the government would, would need to spend about $12.5 million to at least uh, manage the Black Sigatoga problem in St. Lucia. At the time, the government committed about $5 million and um, allocated some in the budget of, of 2012. We then approached the, the, the Taiwanese government through the embassy. We explained to them that we needed specific um, assistance with, with, to ensure that we have a long-term program to combat Black Sigatuka disease. A project proposal was put together with their assistance, with the assistance of our professionals in Solution, and also individuals who were into agriculture but who were not necessarily attached to the Ministry of Agriculture. And this project has proven to be another very good example of the unwavering support and deepening friendship between our two governments and peoples. We can see that the main object of this bilateral cooperation between our two governments and the farmers and experts have helped to improve the quality of life of the banana and plantain farmers, their households, and a wider rural economy. The Republic of China, Taiwan, did not hesitate to help St. Lucia, continuing what has been a mutually beneficial bilateral relationship. Through their International Cooperation and Development Fund, they were instrumental in St. Lucia's successful Get It Right the First Time response to Black Sigatoka. The Republic of China, Taiwan has a wealth of experience in combating the spread and they brought with them not just a multi-million dollar budget, but technical expertise. They are two main objectives of capacity building. First is hardware facility. We plan to set up soil analysis laboratory pathological analysis laboratory and uh, weather station. We invite Taiwan Banana Research Institute experts to come to San Lucia to conduct the workshops and uh, organize the core personnel to
to take training in Taiwan. With the government of St. Lucia pledging 7.3 million and the Republic of China, Taiwan, providing an additional 5.4 million, the project kick-started in August 2013, with a projected completion date set for August 2015. Before we go any further into how the Black Sigatoka Management Project was structured and implemented, let us understand what Black Sigatoka is. Black Sigatoka is also called Black Leaf Streak Disease. It is a fungus with the scientific name Mygospherella fijiensis. The Black Sigatoka fungus causes leaves to spot and rot and the fruit to prematurely ripen. It can reduce crop yields by up to 50%. The fungus was first identified in the South Pacific and travels easily with fabric, hairs and infected plants across trade routes. Black Sigatoka is more damaging and difficult to control than the more popular Yellow Sigatoka disease. It also affects a wider variety of banana species including plantains. Let us now look at how the project was designed to address Black Sigatoka, starting with the roles and responsibilities of the BSMU team. The government had to move quickly, um, engage its partners to come up with a, a plan to give response to that disease. And that is what gave birth to the Black Sigatoka Management Unit. So all of those partnering agencies came together to contribute to the development of a unit that would um, efficiently and effectively confront the, the Black Sigatoka disease. Phase one of the project began in April 2012 to 2013 with the primary focus of emergency response and stabilization of the spread of Black Sigatoka. This phase was funded mainly by the St. Lucian government and involved two main prongs. One, sanitation, which is the eradication and rehabilitation of abandoned fields. And two, reliable arrangement for chemical control of the disease. We came in at about April of 2012 and we put in a two-tier system, two-phase system in place. The first phase was about emergency uh, treatment control and uh, stabilization of production, which was going down at the time. And so we did a lot of what you call eradication of abandoned fields, uh, because there were lots, thousands of acres of abandoned fields all around St. Lucia, that was the first part. And the next major uh, critical input was the question of chemical treatment of the disease. The, the Black Seagull took a management project provided a more reliable supply of chemicals. Whereas we encourage farmers as much as possible to practice cultural, to do the cultural practices, make sure that the fields are clean and so on. And last resort, you apply the chemical because you have to apply it at some point. The government of St. Lucia, through the Ministry of Agriculture, has made this an affordable input for the farmer. The government subsidizes 50% of the cost of the, of the oil and the fungicides. Phase two of the Black Sigatoka Management Project focuses on ensuring the recovery efforts and gains made by phase one stuck, while at the same time implementing a proactive integrated system of disease treatment, control and management. The first prong of phase two is disease monitoring and forecasting. The second is provision of supporting technical and advisory services for farmers. The third is ensuring a steady supply of chemical agents for regular application to control the disease. However, the most extensive prong of phase two is capacity building and changing cultural practices for long-term disease management. Let us take a look at some of the activities under each prong, starting with disease monitoring and forecasting. There are two main forms of monitoring. Climatological monitoring uses a peach evaporimeter to collect data such as air temperature, relative humidity and wind speed. Used weekly, it is effective in determining the suitability of conditions to the spread of the disease and to forecast and adjust the interval between fungicide treatments. Biological monitoring and forecasting measures the stage of disease development on the plants themselves using the youngest leaves. It is designed for early detection of new attacks of Sigatoka. This method is also effective in determining the efficacy of the chemical treatment in the young leaves of the plant. 
There was a lot of capacity building in phase two. We trained our farmers uh, all around the island. We also worked with the French Research Institute, CIRAD, um, where we've been, we've, we've done, in fact, we've pursued a few research, uh, field-based research activities, which are still ongoing as it relates to um, resistant varieties or partially, moderately resistant varieties. You had officers from St. Lucia, from the various, from NFTO, for example, going over to Martinique and Guadeloupe and seeing what they are doing. Um, um, and, and, and they, you had that kind of horizontal exchanges taking place. As previously mentioned, the largest component of Phase 2 was capacity building and training. Some of the activities are still ongoing and they involve increasing knowledge and know-how at the producer level, building capacity at the research and development unit and providing training and equipment. The laboratory units also needed training to ensure disease resistance was being addressed at the micropropagation and tissue culture level. The Bananas Research Institute, TBRI, have visited St. Lucia in 2014 and provided training and technical cooperations for the officers for banana and for the banana farmers. Also, several technical officers from St. Lucia have visited Taiwan the same year, 2014, in October, to receive specialized training from our institute. In close collaboration with the project, we have received um, modern equipment and supplies for the en enhancement of our laboratory facilities. And as such, we are able to, um, we have improved very significantly on our diagnostic um, um, techniques. Some of our staff receive training in the modern techniques of um, fungicide sensitivity, which is a, 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 a situation which allows us to be able to assess in the lab the different fungicides that are being used in the management of black seeker to, to, to be able to analyze whether though the, the organism or the fungus which causes the disease has developed any sort of level of tolerance or, or resistance to those fungicides. So as a result of that, our staff are able to do that level of diagnosis in the lab and we are able now to share that information with the technical staff of the black seeker to unit and in such so doing that they are able to better manage the, the spraying regimes in the whole overall management of Black Sea The most important part of capacity building and training was among the farmers themselves. Banana farming comes with deeply held cultural practices, many of which had to be adapted and improved and others reinforced. Some of the key training farmers received were how to improve drainage, how agricultural diversification can manage and reduce black cigatoka, switching from bananas or integrating with other crops as well as livestock. How to apply a non-chemical integrated pest management approach with things such as drainage, irrigation, timing of fertilization and proper spacing of crop. Let's explore some truly engaging aspects of the training activities, namely the field demonstration exercises. A healthier plant tends to be more resilient, tends to be stronger, and therefore, whereas you will still have to treat it with chemicals, but you will have less chemical treatment to do. This is not only good for the farmer because it's less money he, has, he or she has to spend buying chemicals, but also it is good for, for his health, the health of his family. It is also good for the environment because we, have, we apply less chemicals in the, in, in the wider environment. And as well, the market, the consumers are happier because they know that uh, our small growers here are doing their very best to use less and less chemicals in the banana industry. And the banana that they're eating is a wholesome, high quality banana. The demonstration on the farm, it's excellent. I learned a lot about it, field practices. Do the good practices, do the deflower on time, do the sleeving on time, your drain controlling your grass, fertilize your farm on time, that will bring, bring you forward. We're cooperating a lot because we all together, is we, we united as one family of animals. We're getting a very good support from the officers coming. Sometimes we're having training like they mixing the oil for us and make us spray one time, every all farmer spraying one time. So that's why you could see up in Malze, so, so green everywhere is very green. We, 
so that all the farmers of Inmarza could control the black sikotoka right now. From first I learned from how to take care of the bananas and from the bananas to the plant, similar to the planting. I'm already getting there. I will. And I hope all the other farmers that in the plantation in the planting business will get there also. You know see by the map on see figla poco bruzen lula ou kay nivo quanti temps pou bali because sou bali avant ta pi gaspé la an pa jas gaspiller so fou sa fou training nan mwa pou nan chay because training nan kay fò sauver la an et mwa apresye la sikato ka management nan tou because fou yo la nan chay ba ay si pa te yo nou de kay ou de kay fè an lè ou nou mais fou idea yo ek assistant mwa apresye an chay what we have been trying to push for a long time is what we call um, crop diversification, where you have a, a wide range of different crops that have been grown here, although the main crop is bananas. But what we have, we have um, cantaloupe, we have honeydew, papaya, spinach, and, and all in an effort to help the farmer manage his risk. So I really appreciate it because when I started from this, I had a piece of the drip line, a drip line, a generator, and I had a piece of water in the can. And I had to be the ambassador of Taiwan. I had to be the ambassador of Taiwan. I had to be the ambassador of Taiwan. Mr. Morgan, the officer of the field, he had to be the ambassador of Taiwan. 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 Et puis, à ce moment-là, quand on est là, 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 c'est un bon bain, moi, t'es, là, moi, t'es sorti, coupé un tien d'Afrique, là, et puis, mettez les gyms et différents bains qu'à planter. In total, the capacity building prong of phase two trained 40 technicians, including seven lab assistants, stakeholder agencies, extension officers, and 150 farmers in comprehensive disease control. Certificates were issued, which counts towards GAP certification, which is crucial to improving export readiness. So, how successful was the Black Sigatoka Management Project? And what are some of the key issues that will continue to need support? Those spearheading the project explain. I believe there's a lot that needs to, to happen. We want to ensure that we move to, to, to a stage where where we focus more on productivity because we want our farmers to move to a situation where they are producing 12, 14, 16, possibly 20 tons um, to the acre. We know that the assistance which was given to us by the, by the government of Taiwan and the assistance which was given to us by the government of St. Lucia enabled us to, to, to sort of put a, a lid on the problem, so to speak. We have been able to eradicate many of the abundant fields. We have been able to provide a lot of training to our farmers so that they move from a situation of, of mon monoculture where they have five, ten acres of uh, ba only bananas to a situation where you have um, a, a multi-cropping um, system where you have spinach, you have melons, you have pawpaw, in addition to five or six acres of bananas to enable them not only to diversify the, the, the income base, but also to enable them to, 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 to weather certain storms in the event of natural disasters. All in all, the, the project has been significantly um, successful, I must admit, uh, in terms of meeting the objective of effectively putting uh, 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 an integrated system in place to, to, to manage the disease and to facilitate and to help the farmer ma maintain his production at the field level. I believe overall that the, that the Black Sigur Toka Management Unit have assisted the industry and have provided some levels of stabilization in terms of the management and control of Black Sigur Toka. I don't think without the subsidy that farmers would have survived the, the, the control on, and the management of black cigarette. For the last um, year or so, probably a little more than that, the control has been very good. And so we have not had any significant problem. Our technical team work very closely with them. We keep a, a close watch on what is happening. There are reports that, that come out of the black cigarette unit, which are very good. And we have suggested ways of improving our communications and and you know, ensuring that um, the, if you like the, the, the control program is as effective as possible and continue to continues to be to be effective. The benefit that came is that it stopped the 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 industry from collapsing altogether. Because without the assistance which came from the 
Black Sika Toga Management Unit, you wouldn't have an industry. St. Lucia is doing very well in controlling the disease. In fact, in management, in managing uh, uh, the disease in a way that uh, disease pressure will double. If you look at the fields in uh, uh, farms that has been in the past uh, completely wiped out by the disease, the regeneration has been uh, picked up and uh, I see very good signals of, uh, of, 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 of a better situation. We have a golden opportunity at this time. What is required is to strategize, review our marketing strategies, review our, 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 our whole concept and visioning of the, of the banana industry, banana and planting industry, and see what, what can be achieved and what contributions it can make for the future growth and development of our country and the livelihoods of our farmers. I wish to firmly express on behalf of the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, my profound satisfaction with the level of achievement that has been made this far under the project. The banana industry of St. Lucia is recovering and it is our desire through our bilateral cooperation arrangements to continue to support the future growth and diversification of the banana industry and the agriculture sector. We still believe there is this, this you know, a lot of hope for, for the banana industry. Between 2012 and, and 2014, that banana industry has injected over $60 million into the economy of St. Lucia. So definitely it is very important um, to the economy of St. Lucia, especially the rural economy. Many of the families who depended on bananas in the, in the past decades, many of them um, are no longer in bananas and you can see the impact of, of that on the rural economy all around, especially the, the coastal villages of St. Lucia. And we believe if we are a little more efficient, if we can enhance productivity, then the banana industry will continue to play a significant role um, in the economy of St. Lucia. We'll continue to address poverty and especially um, unemployment in this country. Black Sigatoga